Tyson, obviously a lot of components led to that comeback, but would any one thing you could put your finger on why the momentum kind of changed there? I feel like taking care of the ball and stops was equally what led to that comeback because um, they had like 50 points, like the 52. They was in the 50s the last five minutes, I mean 10 minutes of the game. And we cut down on the turnovers the last 10 minutes of the game. So both of them contributed to the comeback. Tyson, you mentioned turnovers. What was it about the, the first half that, I mean, you guys were turning the ball over quite a bit again? Just again, like last game, they pressure bothered us a little bit. Um, just simple mistakes that we made. We just gotta gotta correct those mistakes and keep getting better. Can you can get it to Garrett here on the front row. Robert, when you hit that go ahead three, did everybody just kind of take a deep breath and realize that you guys were locked in and in a position to win the game? First, I would like to thank God for this opportunity. But uh, when the three ball went in, you know, it was just a, a sense of relief in a way, you know. But we uh, we had it in our minds that we weren't going to lose this game when we came out of a media timeout. We knew what we had to do to come back, so we had confidence and believed in each other. Robert, what were those last three, four minutes like when you guys, I mean, you're still trailing by double digits with just over five minutes left, I think, and then all of a sudden you guys are going to win the basketball game. Just what, what are the emotions? What are you guys saying to each other? How do you guys feel when all that's going on? Yeah, we were fired up, you know, um, just believing in each other, believing in our defense. It's an unbelievable feeling to face adversity like that and come back and win the game. Go ahead and get that to Logan over there in the white shirt to the place right. Abdul, uh, no shot attempts for you tonight. What do you have to do to get more involved in the offense? Um, honestly, I'm just trying to help the team wherever I can. But <clears throat> I guess I have to, if it, if that's what it takes, take more shots. Uh, I feel like I got to put myself in a better position where my, my teammates could give me the ball, uh, which I think I haven't done that. But um, I haven't been able to do that. And then I just got to consistently do it more in practice, I guess. So. Go back to Paul, and then we'll get it to Joel here in the front. Abdul, it's kind of different from last year. I know you guys, at times, when you had comebacks last year, you were more so outscoring guys and getting it done on the offensive end. What's it kind of say about this team to, to put the defensive clamps down on them? And, and that's pretty much how you got back in the game. Um, I truly believe we are like a, we are a, great, a, good, a great defensive team. We just have to put more effort to, to doing that. Um, uh, we were kind of uh, sloppy first first half. Um, we, we picked the intensity up the, the, uh, the last 10 minutes in the second half, um, which I, I feel like we, we have to do every game. Um, um, like Tyson said, we the little we did like some little mistakes and everything, but we have we're gonna pick it up. Uh, we learn every day in practice. So, Tyson, this is two games in a row now you had big scoring outputs and things just was this kind of the plan coming into the season for especially in the early going no nick and, and stuff for the offense to kind of run through years that just how it's kind of worked out through two games this is kind of how it worked out um i was just trying to do whatever um it helps our team to win you know we we're, we're we rely a lot on our defense and sometimes we can go in scoring drops and stuff so i try to put myself in a good position to score the ball especially when we um we're not getting ready as involved as we should Time for a couple more for the players. We'll go back to Garrett here in front right. Uh, Tyson, as a team, 16 turnovers in the first half. Uh, did coaches basically say, tell you guys, you know, let you know that that's not acceptable? Yeah, he emphasized it a lot. He actually emphasized it a lot in practice this week leading up to this game. So it's going to be rough in practice with those turnovers. So we got we to gotta work on that. Anything else for the players before we we'll go back to Tyler? Kind of like Joel was saying, I mean, 23 points in the first game, 28 this game. What is it feeling like for you out, out there? Does it feel pretty effortless? Is, is, is it almost a feeling like you look at the score sheet after the game and you're almost surprised to see that you scored so many points? Um, well, I'm not really surprised. You know, I put a lot of work in over the last four years, and um, it's just paying off right now. You know, just like thank God for that. Anything else for the players? Uh, you can see that, you know, our turnovers, again, really, really cost us in that first half. Have 16 turnovers a half. I can't remember the last time we had a team that had 16 turnovers at halftime. Their pressure, the way they scouted us, obviously they watched the FIU game. Uh, they really got into us, climbed into us, and we did not handle the pressure well at all. Uh, so give Sam Houston State a ton of credit. Again, that's a team that won their conference last year, that uh, 
you know, lost in the conference tournament to go to the NIT. Very well coached, good team. Uh, and they got some older guys. They have a lot of JC guys. They played us tough. And uh, I, I will say that I'm really proud of the way our team fought back and never quit, never gave up. Never dropped their head down 17 in the first half to cut it to seven. Didn't drop their head again down 18 with – how much time was left in the game? We're down 18. 14 minutes, Coach. 14 minutes. And, and that really makes me feel good about this group. And then to finish the game on a 33-6 to six run was keep by our defense. And we changed how we were playing the ball screens and started plugging instead of being more aggressive with our heads. I thought that helped us stay more compact. Uh, you know, uh, I thought that uh, we did a better job rebounding, and then we started being uh, better offensively. And, uh, you know, Tyson had another terrific game. He was one kept us in the game in the first half. Uh, and then Reggie really came alive late uh, in the game. But the last 13 minutes of the game, I think he played the whole way through and was really dominant uh, the way we, uh, you know, expect him to be. Questions? We'll start here with Tyler in the front row to coaches left. I think you called a timeout there with just under 14 minutes left. You, you talked about changing some defensive stuff. What else did you say in that huddle that kind of sparked the guys? Hey, just to fight. We got a lot of time here left. I mean, there's all sorts of things. Don't drop your heads ever. Keep fighting all the way through, one possession at a time. Like we came out to start the second half down seven. And, uh, you know, we're in great shape to, to be able to, you know, capitalize on that, finishing strong. And then uh, we gamble for a steal, and they get a three. You just got to be solid and not gamble and, and, and just play solid. Now, that's what we did down the stretch defensively. We got really solid, weren't gambling, staying in front. I thought DJ Stewart gave us tremendous minutes off the bench today. That was his best game, and you can see his potential for the future. Uh, you know, I, I thought it was really tough for Iverson because he kept turning the ball over. So we really played a lot of guys a lot of minutes down the stretch there. You know, you look at Tyson, he got a whole 26 seconds of rest the entire game. Uh, so we've got to get more out of our bench. And uh, you know, something we're going to work on moving forward because we need, we need to play more than, you know, six, seven guys. We've got to be able to play eight, ideally, and, and eventually nine. We'll keep it on the front row to coaches left and go to Garrick. Uh, ben, the last three minutes, you outscored him 17-0. to zero. Just how stout was that defense for the last three it minutes? It was great defense, game? but also big shots. You know, we, we kept uh, attacking. Uh, Reggie got some big offensive rebounds, kept him alive. Uh, I thought that, uh, obviously, the, the three to tie the game by Tyson was huge. That was a huge boost for our guys, just the adrenaline level. And I'll tell you what, our crowd was awesome tonight. Our crowd really helped our team. I mean, that home court advantage of having the crowd going crazy, helping us get back in the game was phenomenal. And I said on the radio, and I'm saying it to you guys live, I'm so appreciative of every fan that was here tonight. And uh, it, it's fun. It's never fun for the coach, but it's always fun for everybody involved in the game to have a comeback win where you come back. That makes it exciting. And I think that'll be something people will talk about. Uh, our guys, again, showed a lot of heart and a lot of mental toughness. And we talked about that. You asked the question, mental toughness, being mentally tough and just being solid. And, and we really started to do that. Robert Street, to put us up three, was really huge. And you could see then it started to fall on them where, you know, they felt it coming. You know, dunk at the end of the game caused uh, an issue. And uh, that's probably partly my fault because – and I think I explained that after the last game. We want to win every game by 10 points. That's what this net scorecard does in terms of the end of the season. And so uh, Reggie thought we were up eight. He was dunking it to go up 10. When you're in a one-bid league, they don't necessarily know that because there's only one team coming out. When you're in a multiple-bid league, those little things about how much you win by – and by the way, FIU and Sam Houston State, you think they're going to win a lot of games at their level this year? I do. I think they're going to win a lot of games. We'll stay on the front row to coaches right and go to Logan. Both games this year, Reggie Perry has been kind of a slow starter. What can you do to get him more involved offensively early on in the ball games? Yeah, and it, staying out of foul trouble for him tonight is big because he got two fouls in the, probably, what, the first four minutes, three minutes. So then he's got to sit. And, and that was tough. One was over the back and one was, I forget what the second one was. But staying out of foul trouble early, but not to the point where he's getting out of the way of guys driving like we had against FIU. He'll be fine. And he's got to understand, and this is the truth, 
every single player that he's playing against and team is focused on him. He is the first team preseason uh, all league player in the SEC. Everybody's trying to go to him. Every time he got the ball tonight in the post, he was surrounded by four guys. So it's going to force him a lot of time to have to kick it back out, and uh, you know, not not you know, try to force the issue. And he did a great job, as you see, rebounding the basketball. The offensive glass late in the second half was critical for us. And I thought he played some really good defense. He had a couple big blocks, you know, did some really nice things for us outside of the scoring load. But you know, I've seen really good players. They don't score early. They can still affect the game in so many ways. So it's not just about him scoring. He's got to understand all the other things he does help us win. And then the scoring is going to come. Eventually, he's going to wear them down. We'll go to the second row and Brian, and then we'll get it over to Paul. There was a point in the second half where Tyson Carter decided he wanted to drive to the basket more. I think that was really a turning point for your team. Was that something you told him in the huddle that, hey, these opportunities are there, or was that something he just yeah, found out for himself? He, he felt the pressure. In other words, when everybody's pressured out, they're dying leads, you've got to be able to put the ball on the floor and get to the basket. Uh, and, and he showed he can do that. And he did that very well for us and uh, had a couple huge drives for us. He had one where he thought he got fouled late. We got the ball back, and I think Reggie got it back, and I think we scored. You know, like, I think Abdul's uh, rebound on Tyson's missed free throw. With the game tied, he uh, uh, or shoot, yeah, and then he kicks it out to Robert for the three. Isn't that what happened? Uh, yes. I know Abdul had a huge rebound off a missed free throw where he kicked it out and got a big basket. Go ahead, Paul. Obviously, he's still learning. Speaking about DJ Stewart, but just talk about the energy that that he brings to your team. Whether he's starting or coming off the bench, he's going to have to play big minutes. But just. Not so much a spark on offense, but it seems like it starts with his defense. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, what a blessing that is to have a guy who plays both ends of the court so well. And he had two threes that were like in and out that I thought were going in. I'm telling you, he's a good shooter. He is such a hard worker. There's no one that works harder than DJ Stewart at his game, at his craft. And just a wonderful kid. I'm just so happy because I feel like this is like a breakout game for him now moving forward where he's going to really, really start to grow as a player with confidence. And, uh, you know, he does so much defensively for us, but he, he's also a good passer. Uh, you know, he's, he's a very unselfish player. Tonight he had two assists, two turnovers, but he's constantly trying to make plays for others. We had 18 assists tonight on our 23 baskets. Uh, or 18 assists on our yeah on our 23 baskets. We just got to cut down on our turnovers, and uh, be able to handle the ball better. And you know Iverson will learn from this experience, and it's better to learn from an experience where your team still comes out ahead. We'll go back to the front row and Joel. Small sample size, just two games, but just what's kind of your evaluation so far? Has anything surprised you out of, out of your group for the first two games? Is anything kind of concerning you very much after just two games? What's kind of stood out to you? Well, we just got to uh, get better at playing with more depth. I'm going to have to get guys more, more rest. And we need, like Prince came in, and I thought he, he was, you know, solid. He was very good in practice. But get into the game, it's like getting – it's like DJ. You know, you, he's got to get in there and play through some mistakes, and then he'll start to loosen up. But, you know, you know like things that we're working on, how you're going to play ball screens and – you know, how we're going to set a screen, you know, in the out-of-bounds place. Just things you've got to execute better. And, again, you can see we're playing a lot of new guys. You're talking about Iverson, Prince, him. Even uh, Keyshawn, we talked about that in the last game. You know, tonight, again, he has nine rebounds. He, I don't know how many minutes he played in his career the first two years, but it wasn't many. And, uh, you know, he's doing a good job for us. He plays with a veteran pace out there. Anything else for Coach before we let him go? All right, thank you guys. We'll see you Wednesday, Wednesday next week. Thank you.